Summer is officially here. We're officially in June. Yay! I love summer. I love summer dresses and outfits and a lot of the outdoor activities. However, there are also things we need to be mindful to be able to stay healthy, overall to be beneficial to our health and wellness. So in today's video, I want to talk about 10 things we want to be mindful in summer. Hello everyone, welcome back to Miss Me's channel. This is Miss Me. In my channel, I do vlog videos, makeup videos, fitness videos, and overall lifestyle videos and everything I'm passionate about to create a happy, healthy, beautiful lifestyle. If this content interests you, make sure you subscribe to this channel and also ring the notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Are you ready? Let's get started. So I made a list in my phone so that I don't ramble too much because there are definitely a lot of things I can ramble about summer. All right, let's get started. First thing about summer is to apply sunscreen. Ta-da! Sunscreen is so important. I know everybody loves to get a summer tan during the summer, but trust me, like if you're going to go exposed into the sun, even though you're wearing sunscreen, you're still going to get that tan. But I personally know someone who actually had skin cancer from getting too much tan. Um, she said when she was younger, she used to put a lot of oil and go get a sun bath or something like that. And then she ended up having skin cancer at an older age. I know a lot of statistics shows that maybe you will get skin cancer before a certain age or before the age of 35. But if you love to go to the beach, if you love to do like a lot of outdoor activities just like me, definitely apply sunscreen because skin cancer is a real thing. Also, even if like I don't get skin cancer, uh, recently I've been walking and jogging in the neighborhood in the morning and a lot of times when I just woke up, I was like, oh, that's probably fine. It's not too hot. The sun is not completely out. Let me just go for a jog or go for a walk. It's probably okay. I'm just gonna put on a cap. But you know, like when you wear a cap, like you still are exposed to the sun on your cheeks. And I start to see certain like, pigmentations on my cheeks and also I noticed that I think I look older after being exposed to the sun. Definitely sun is the biggest cause of skin aging. So if you want to have a beautiful skin at an older age, definitely put on sunscreen. Don't expose to the sun too much. Always have both sunscreen and have a physical block to shield yourself, shelter yourself from the sun. So definitely the most important thing I want to talk about is to put on the sunscreen. The next tip I want to give is to not eat very cold food with empty stomach. With this tip, I actually learned it the hard way because I remember staying in an apartment. I, I just remember I woke up like around 11 a.m. during the summer vacation time. I was like, life is good. Let me go to CVS and get myself a cold coffee. So I just walked to the CVS by the apartment complex and I bought some iced cold coffee from the CVS, of course. And then I just drank it. I was like, oh, it feels good, man. You know, you stay up late, you woke up late, and then you had some cold coffee, iced coffee in the morning with empty stomach. Great deal. And then after about five minutes, and when I was driving to school to the library, I know I was in summer break, but I still went to the library. My stomach just started to cramp. Oh my goodness. All time I had to stop somewhere in the parking lot. And I had to like, oh my goodness, my stomach. It just like, it was just like cramping. <laughs> because coffee by itself with empty stomach, if you're not putting a lot of milk, if you're dr just drinking the iced black coffee, the coffee itself is actually a little bit irritating to the stomach. And then on top of that, you're drinking like iced cold coffee. And I remember my stomach was like cramping for at least like five to 10 minutes until I finally just stopped. I ended up microwave the rest of the coffee. I know it tastes like super weird, but lesson learned next time I need to eat something in my stomach, make sure my stomach is not empty. And then enjoy my ice latte. Third tip is actually also something I learned the hard way is to be mindful of your heart rate when you're exercising, especially in summer. Because when you are moving in a hot temperature, your heart rate is already high. And then you're doing exercise. Like sometimes you may actually have some health issues, um, especially if you're like me. Um, genetically, my family all have some heart problems. I have irregular heartbeat. So sometimes if I don't rest well, sometimes when I work, my heart would just go 
I would just feel like a chest pain and then later it will be slowly be better and every time I go to the doctor the doctor said like your heart rate is like irregular so maybe this tip is only for me but I'm sure some of you guys may also have other issues with heart rate during exercise so usually I'm okay doing exercise in the gym because usually in the gym the temperature is fairly low like 70 68 degrees sometimes it's even like 59 degrees looks like freezing cold in the gym but in summer I like to go bike riding I like to run outside and one time I remember I had a little bit of like pre-workout energy drink and I went for a jog in the summer I think it was like 6 30 in the morning it was definitely not too hot but it was hot in Texas anyways and I remember my heart rate was just like so high to the point that I had to stop I felt so bad for like at least 20 minutes I had to walk the whole time and it definitely happened to me when I was cycling outdoors you know sometimes when I go inclines and things like that I know a lot of times we drink pre-workout drinks and we want to drink some energy drink to boost our performance but in summer when you're running or doing outdoor activities in a hot temperature definitely be very mindful of your heart rate try to monitor it if you felt like your heart is beating too fast it's okay to take a break um, don't push yourself too hard to the point that you're no longer doing something healthy for yourself. So definitely something I learned the hard way as well. Tip number four is electrolytes. I love to do a lot of bike riding in summer and I also like to go hiking, jogging, and I also love to do hot yoga. So in general, I love to sweat a lot regardless of what season, but definitely I sweat way more in summer because of the temperature. So I think two summers ago, um, if, I think every time after hot yoga or every time after I go bike riding, I start to feel lightheaded and I was like, maybe it's sugar. So I started to eat a lot of sugar and it didn't work. So I was like, why am I so lightheaded? So I talked to my yoga teacher and he said, oh, because you took two hot yoga class and then you went bike riding when it was like 108 degrees outside you're not just like low in carbs, you're also low in electrolytes. So if you are doing a lot of summer exercise, if you're sweating a lot, I definitely recommend to take some electrolytes um, supplement. My yoga teacher recommended me one a supplement. I got it from Amazon. I'll put the link in the description box down below. It's not sponsored. You can get anything, but that one he recommended me was like sugar-free, I think. I only drink those sugar-free ones because I don't like to drink sugar. I like to eat my sugar. I love to eat my calories for sure. And I don't think um, a big spike in my blood of sugar, it will be good for my overall performance so I definitely drank the sugar-free one the electrolytes so definitely if you sweat a lot during a workout try to monitor and definitely I am low in electrolytes after I sweat too much so definitely monitor but um, just some disclaimer if you have other underlying healthy conditions if you have high blood pressure definitely check with your doctor to see like what health or nutrition or sports supplements that you can take will be safe for you tip number five when you go hiking always bring enough water enough food um, I originally when I go work out I actually don't bring like energy bars and stuff I just bring water but sometimes I will feel hungry I will felt lightheaded especially when you try to go hiking for a long time so definitely think about your water think about electrolytes think about your food make sure you have enough energy with you and before you go hiking especially if you go hiking alone definitely definitely charge your phone and make sure you bring like a battery charger of some sort just in case you got lost and you can just look into the google map or you can definitely call for help as well so Definitely something to remember and also if you're a girl, um, if you go hike alone, make sure you bring a pepper spray. Make sure pepper spray for self-defense and also bring your phone just in case you need help. So definitely before you go on a hike, before you go outdoor activities, make sure you check your bag. Make sure you get like a good backpack or like a waistband uh, or a waist bag. Make sure that you bring these essentials with you just in case anything happens. If you're lucky, you may never need the pepper spray. You may never need a food you may never felt like lightheaded or something like that but definitely before when I went hiking I had a friend who had low blood sugar uh, my mother-in-law was like having low energy as well and definitely I've heard stories about a girl being attacked when like running in a trail or something like being alone so definitely bring all these essentials just in case you won't regret it tip number six tip number six is to be mindful of the sports drink previously I did recommend to take an um, electrolyte stuff supplements if um, you actually sweat a lot but sports drink a lot of sports drink and energy drinks they have a ton of sugar and a lot of energy drink they have a ton of caffeine 
I'm not saying don't drink them at all. I don't think it's in my place to say don't drink it at all. I drink energy drinks sometimes, but definitely be mindful of the sugar and caffeine intake. Uh, I can't stress enough about it. And don't drink too much and don't drink too close to the workout. Usually the energy drink, they come in these big, huge cans. And those big can of energy drink, they actually contain three to four cups of coffee's worth of caffeine intake. So I don't know for sure, but for me, I only drink a quarter of the whole can. That's that's at most how much I drink. Like I would never drink more than a quarter of the whole can. Usually that equals one cup of coffee. Sometimes I would just drink one espresso coffee shot um, and I think that's enough. Um, but if you are just outdoor, you don't have a coffee machine or you know, like you can go to the CVS to buy the energy drink, make sure you don't drink the whole thing. Just drink a quarter of it. You can share it with your workout buddies. You can share the whole can. Um, but definitely, definitely, I definitely don't think it's a good idea to drink the whole energy drink can. It's just not. Not very good and also I feel like sometimes when I drink too much of energy drink my heart rate is like super high when I go running my heart rate is like go too high to the point that it's actually sabotaging my performance so be mindful I'm not saying don't drink it at all sometimes I do think there is a place for sports drink and I do uh, understand why some people do drink energy drink but just overall be mindful of that tip number seven is that um, a lot of times after we sweat a lot, we love to turn on the AC. After you sweat a lot, all your pores are open. And when you turn on the AC too high, when the room is too cold, the cold air will actually got into your pores. And all those cold air will go into your body. It's actually not good for you. Definitely try to be mindful. If you're sweating a lot, make sure first uh, wipe off your sweat first because there are a lot of bacteria in your sweat because when you sweat, it actually um, attract a lot of bacteria. So make sure you dry yourself out first before you turn on the AC or go into a super cool AC room. Trust me, like I definitely got a headache or cold before just because I was like, I'm so hot, let me go into the AC room. Ah, oh, feels good, man. And the next day I had a headache or the next day I had a cold, a running nose. Uh, it's just not very pleasant. So just be mindful after a workout, after you sweat a lot, make sure you wipe off, dry out, and then go into this very cool AC room to enjoy the summer coolness. Tip number eight is um, don't sleep with wet hair. I still struggle a little bit because I do sometimes take shower right before I go to bed and I don't wait until my hair is dried. I just immediately go to bed because I'm like just tired. But usually the next day I wake up with migraine or headache. So I think in summer it happens a lot because in summer we do take multiple showers sometimes you know we will just like go to work out and take a shower and then we will go for a walk and then we'll be like oh it's so i'm so sweaty again let me just take another quick shower and then our hair is like semi wet and then we just go to like the bed and the next day it's just i don't really understand exactly why i think the cold air does get into the head a little bit but just be mindful like this is like my years of experience of having headaches and migraines one of the key cause of my migraine is actually sleeping with wet hair so definitely um dry your hair before you go to bed is a good idea okay tip number nine is actually about mental health i know summer is here um in summer, we wear shorts, we go to the pool, we wear a bikini. A lot of times, uh, people are talking about our summer body. We're trying to lose how many pounds for the summer season so we can go try on the bikinis, so we can wear that beautiful dress. Um, but just don't stress too much about the summer body image. Um, I think it happened to me when I was in high school. I remember I was a chubby kid in high school and I remember like I wanted to be cute in summer. I wanted to wear that like beautiful skirt that's like above my knees and which means I have to show my legs but my legs were my legs are always strong and kind of choppy a little bit. Uh, I had strong legs since I was little, but then I had fat wrapping around it. So I remember I was like being so stressed. I was like every day, I was like, why am I not losing weight? I was like weighing myself. And I ended up being in this rut about stressing about my body and age just because of the summer. But at the end of the day, you just need to be healthy and fit. You don't really need to have that like 
six pack, although I do love to have that six pack, but it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you're beautiful when you're confident. And while I do believe that like by exercising, eating healthy, it's gonna be good for our overall, overall health, we all have our flaws in our body. My legs just look short, but that's okay. I also have a long torso. So don't stress too much about having a perfect summer body, but instead try to live healthy and your summer body will just come along the way. The last one is actually a tip to myself because I actually noticed something about myself is that I've ever, ever since this like early summer came in Texas, I started to buy a lot of ice cream. By the way, can I just give a shout out to this ice cream bar from Costco? It's called the Melona. It's so good. My favorite flavor is the melon flavor. By the way, not sponsored. Um, but I noticed that I've been buying a lot of ice creams. I've noticed that I've been eating a lot of ice creams because I was hot and I was craving for sugar. Mm, I think it's very easy to overdose on ice cream in summer because in winter because it's cold I would just like I have a sweet tooth I would just buy two scoops and I felt like oh it's kind of cold let me put it back in the fridge versus in summer I would just keep eating ice cream from the jar so the last tip is actually for myself ice cream has a lot of calories and let's just try eating real melons instead of the melon flavored ice cream but I guess I'll still eat them ice cream but sometimes I would eat two to three bars in a day it was just crazy so definitely be more mindful of like when you feel hot what are the things you put into your body is it real melon fruit or is it ice cream so just try to eat more fruit instead of ice cream just saying because fruits are full of vitamins nutrients and sugar but ice cream is just straight sugar and fat so good luck to me hopefully I can Hopefully I can do better and try not to eat too much ice cream. All right, that's it for today. These are the tips and experience I learned through my past 30 summers of my life. I hope these tips can be helpful to you. I hope uh, they can help you to stay um, healthy and well in the incoming summer of 2020. I hope everyone is having a great summer. I hope everyone is having a great day. If you like this video, make sure you give this video a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. So consider subscribing to the channel. It's free and join the fan by subscribing and also ring the notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload a new either fun or educational video and I will see you in my next video. Bye!